Hi, this is John Blyler, Chief Content Officer at Extension Media, uh, magazines like Chip Design and Embedded Intel. Today I'm at the uh, beautiful IMEC campus for their technology forum, and I have the pleasure of speaking to Yella De Schmidt, yes. uh, who is with the uh, CMM, CMST group. And um, you gave a presentation earlier, yes. and you had talked about the uh, actually the smart contact lens. Uh, now, Google Glass is, is coming out here shortly, uh, and uh, it's one way to, to present information, and then, uh, we, and then you're working on the smart contact lenses. Just tell us a little bit about that. So, uh, the idea is, is to, to go one step beyond Google Glass. So, Google Glass is, is a really interesting new device, and, and uh, the basic idea is to, to present information on a new kind of format, so by integrating into your spectacle frames. But um, we thought about, okay, what would be the next step? So uh, that was, okay, let's, let's try to put a display into the contact lens. It's, it's uh, less uh, obtrusive, uh, it's more integrated, but of course it's also much more challenging. You, and you had mentioned, you actually spoke with uh, the gentleman who uh, was, was the uh, impetus behind the Google Glass. Uh, yes, actually, he uh, before going to Google Glass, he also did uh, a lot of research on contact lens displays and, and electronic contact lenses. And uh, yeah, we recently had a brief conversation about about our, our work, and, and yeah, it was very interesting. But um, and and he liked our work, and of course, I liked his work. Uh, and but I I understand that now he went to Google because of course he can achieve much more and quicker results uh, with this Google Glass project, which is of course a very exciting project. Excellent. Now, in your presentation, I mean, there's a lot of challenges that you face. I mean, yes. one of them is this: uh, is the the amount of functionality, the amount of components that you have to put on the lens. Yes. Um, and then the other, the other, um, I guess, uh, why do this is that you see lots of spin-offs coming from this activity. So maybe you could speak to those two. Yeah. So. The, the, the contact lens display ID is actually like a, a, a long-term strategy. It's, it's a long-term motivator to keep on working, uh, to keep working towards this goal. But what we clearly see is that in the meanwhile, we, we can spin off some technologies which are more biomedically oriented. So, for instance, the first one we see is uh, an artificial iris, which will be like a contact lens which can replace the functionality of your iris, which is mainly... Uh, uh, for people who have either uh, uh, a damaged iris due to some trauma or don't have an iris due to some congenital disease. Uh, on the next level, which is a little bit more uh, technologically complicated, we see an active multifocal contact lens. And that's uh, really for people with presbyopia who are uh, getting uh, trouble to, to start reading indeed and they need reading glasses. Beyond and 40, right? Yeah, beyond <laughs> 40. Uh, and the problem right now is you do have these multifocal contact, uh, contact uh, lenses, you have multifocal glasses, but actually these are passive optical solutions for a defective optical component. So they will, they will never be completely convincing, they will never completely re replace the, your defective intraocular lens. So we believe that by making an uh, active multifocal contact lens, we can really make a difference and improve uh, considerably improve the eyesight of people with presbyopia. And, and when you say active, I know you can't talk much about it. I think you said it was you're kind of working on the patent, but the idea is you'd have some something in there that would actually be moving and, and adjusting as you looked around. Is that the idea? Well, we can have multiple stages in this development process. So we can start, for instance, with just uh, a discrete step where we can say, okay, I want my reading function on or I want my reading function off. Or uh, on a lexicon level, we can make make a, an automatic decision process where the lens itself decides, okay, this is the, the, the focal distance I want to aim at. But of course, this is again, it, we need more technology, it will be more complicated, we might need more time and development. So it will, will be the next step. But that doesn't mean that the, the, the first step being just as like a switchable reading glasses functionality, that, that this can already have a benefit and, and added value.